and good Friday afternoon to everyone, and welcome to the Crypto Show. It is very cold, wet, icy, and snowy in southeastern Kentucky. Very dangerous on the highways. Our scheduled guest today was to be Dale Drennan, but due to some technical difficulties, He's not going to be able to make the show today. Uh, We will hope to reschedule that maybe in the next coming week, maybe two. Mm -hmm. Let's see now. But it was just, you know, unfortunate. We had some good things lined up, and we was going to discuss uh, the Roger Patterson film and Patty. But we'll get to some of that stuff maybe next week. Uh, for now, let's go to maybe some uh, some different news. Well, so I sort of have to wing it a little bit today and cover some uh, cover some other stories. Uh, I noticed in our uh, in our chat room we had a question concerning the tent video again, and I will attempt to answer that. Uh, the question was uh, about Muskie Allen going to see the body of the dead Bigfoot and my understanding what's been talked around is that within the next two weeks uh, they're going to meet and supposedly blindfold and drive to the location of where the dead Bigfoot is being kept Uh, I'll try to keep up on that and find out any new information if I can and pass it along Uh, let's see. Let's go to some other news. Uh, on our blog, in case you have not seen it, we had a very in-depth interview done by Doreen Fisher with uh, Extreme Monster Hunter Adam Davies. Uh, some of you may know Adam Davies from uh, the recent uh, Extreme Expedition team where they had a strange humanoid type feature, uh, creature come into their camp during the night. But Mr. Davies has been all over the globe uh, researching and studying various subjects and unknown creatures. Uh, from my understanding, he pays for most of this out of his own pocket. Uh, he's had some. It's a great interview. If you get a chance, you should you should go you know to the site and uh, and read it. it, it it's wonderful. Uh, Seems like a very nice gentleman, and we sure wish him luck on you know on all of his expeditions. And see our next little feature here. If in case you've not seen it, it's kind of gaining some press. Is uh, a friend of mine, Tim Cornett. He uh, he's wrote wrote a couple books and uh, uh, he's our local historian well, here where I live in Bell County, Kentucky. Uh, and uh, he passed a story along to me a long time ago, or several years ago. I guess I heard part of it. Well, I finally got a chance to get up with him and uh, and uh, get him to uh, post the story in, in, in more detail. And it is the story of the four mystery skeletons that were found in Kentucky uh, around Pine Mountain State Park. Uh, as the story kind of goes, you can re- I read the more details on our on our website at uh, thecryptocrew.com. But how the story kind of goes, a uh, guy was out hunting, and it was getting close to the break of dawn, so he uh, decided he's going to sit down and wait for it to get you know complete daylight to do his hunt. And he finds like a pile of uh, what he thinks is brush up against a tree, and he kind of sits down on it, and you know, just waiting around. But turns out that this is bones, and they find uh, they take the bones and they take them to a, a local doctor in, in Pineville, and he is able to construct almost four complete skeletons of this pile of bones. But there's no, uh, they did not find the heads. And the theory is that the heads were, or they were more rounded, that they had actually rolled on down the mountain and went into the Cumberland River, which is which sounds very feasible. 
and uh, they was uh, on these four skeletons. What was funny about them is the femur bones were so much larger than what we consider our modern humans to be, and uh, I think they estimated the actual weight based on the bones would, would have been uh, three or four hundred pounds, and uh, these was actually sent to the Miss, Miss Smithsonian, but. Uh, cause to that is not uh, it was you know unfruitful they never could find out where they went so it's another mystery that uh, the Smithsonian is keeping more secrets as it appears which uh, is probably likely they don't tell us everything and also uh, another little news story I put up was on the photograph of uh, a woman that I think they claimed it was taken in the 1930s. I'm not for sure exactly on that. Uh, her husband had passed away supposedly years before, and she was taking pictures in the basement, and he shows back up in in a photograph. Uh, I personally probably think it's most likely a fake photograph. I ran it through some software that I have, and it did show that there were some some type of manipulation to the photo. Uh, but most likely a fake. It's an yeah, interesting story. But uh, most likely a fake. And we have also, this past week, we have done a couple of uh, book reviews. We kind of started getting into that on our site. Uh, if, if anybody would like to check those out. Uh, uh, there's always some, some good reading out there, but there's also a lot of bad reading out there, so you kind of have to weed through it, and, and we're going to try to help you if we can. And, uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah. And I've also got a report in of some possible Bigfoot tracks being found in New Hampshire again, which it seems to be kind of still... Still popular, you know. There's still some sightings taking place in New Hampshire. Uh, it seems like it's been the hot spot for the last last few months. And maybe we can do a follow up on that story in the next few days. I think that was those were found uh, by Dax Rushlow, which we know Dax. Dax uh, is part of our team. And he he's helped us before, helps us in video, do some videos and do some research. So maybe we can get up with him and uh, find out a little more information about that. I would have done it today if I if I had a little more time, but it just didn't seem like it worked out that way. If anybody would like to call in, feel free to do so. Uh, the number is uh, 818-739-8952. Uh, once you call in, you have to press the number 1 to let me know that you would like to talk and or ask a question. and kind of go from there, or you may ask it in the chat room. I try to monitor monitor it as well, and I know the probably the biggest topic we've had in the last little bit has been the tent video, uh, which we are still waiting waiting on, which we know there's probably not going to be no real lot of news about it until probably in April or close about that time. But uh, we are continuing to monitor that. And it will be interesting to see if uh, uh, Muskie Allen does actually get to go and view the body. Uh, which uh, I don't think that that's not really a Muskie Allen. That's not his real name. I think uh, at some point he started using a, an alias for uh, no reason to me. Uh, that's his personal business, I suppose. But uh, I understand he used to be a researcher, so you know, of some some sort. So that would he would be, you know, he could validate a body that, and that would be good. Uh, question in the chat room: uh, Any news on the Oxford DNA study? None that I'm really aware of, uh, other than uh, last thing I've seen that uh, they were still accepting some samples, and were still looking in, you know, uh, looking into it, and uh, this is it's, it's kind of keeping it. On the back burner, you're just kind of keeping a, a back seat to the Melba Ketchum DNA. 
study uh, a few days ago. There was a video posted on YouTube about the uh, Melba Ketchum DNA study, and they was kind of uh, saying that it had been published in The Examiner, which is kind of a tabloid-type magazine. But that was just a news story. I had actually talked to some people that is actually close related to the uh, Melba Ketchum study, and they confirmed that it was still in peer peer review, and they're still waiting. So uh, I, I would like to see something come from that. Uh, bang or bust. It would be nice for something. Uh, this is uh, the the Ketchum DNA study has been ongoing for what, like five years now. But it's kind of. Uh, I don't follow it as close as I used to, just because it's been so lengthy. It's hard to, yeah. Sometimes you kind of lose interest when there's nothing new, no real new information coming out, other than it's in peer review and you got to wait. Uh, we, I'm still interested in the Oxford study. Uh, that should be. Uh, I think they actually set a date for that to give results, but I don't know how close that is. I can't remember at this time. Any more questions, feel free to type in the chat room or call in. We'll try to answer the best of our ability. Or, uh, if you've tuned in to uh if you've tuned in expecting to hear Dale, uh Dale had to cancel on us today and we were going to be talking about uh the Patterson film, which we hope to reschedule that. And we're sorry for the, uh, the you know, the rescheduling or, or not, you know, him not being able to be here. It just couldn't be avoided at this time. Now, let's see here. What does everybody think about? Uh, about the modern here? Okay, let's see what... Uh, this, I guess this would be, uh, somebody posted a question in the chat room, uh, or a link, I should say. Uh, yes, there have been a lot of uh, updates on Ketchum's uh, personal life and her background. And uh, uh, we do know that she at one time sold maybe her business, or the building, or moved or something like that. And there's been a lot of things about that, which is, it's not been very flattery for her, that's for sure. Flattering for her. But uh, they do have, uh, my understanding in the Ketchum study, there was uh, somewhere around 110 samples submitted. Uh, there's a few samples that I personally find that I would like to know about because I I didn't know if they maybe could cut the mustard with it, so the saying goes. Uh, but it's my understanding when it does release, there will be a list of accepted and rejected samples. Uh, from my understanding, not all samples were actually accepted as being at, from an unknown animal. Uh, somebody posted in the, the chat room that uh, none of her businesses are in good standing with the state of Texas due to unpaid taxes. Uh, taxes are a big issue right now, that's for sure. Uh, and I'm and she does appear to have be having some financial difficulties uh, I don't know exactly who is all has funded this DNA study but uh, her personal affairs do seem to be suspect at this time uh, question do you think if the DNA evidence shows a new unidentified animal that science will start to study Bigfoot or wait for the body to be found my personal opinion is I I think it will take a body under a dead Bigfoot body under any circumstances. I do not think there will be enough DNA. It would always be disputed. It will always be questioned. It will take an actual body, or sometimes we like to say a live cadaver, to to prove it to people. 
uh, as you can see, the, the, just about the, uh, the Melba Ketchum study, there has been, there have been people have been tearing it apart, and it's not even out yet. We don't know all the facts. We don't. I mean, some stuff is leaked, of, of course, but but people have been already tearing it up. So once it does publish, or if it ever publishes, uh, they're going to continue to tear it up. So in my opinion, uh, it's going to take at least one dead Bigfoot body that is made public, that is on the news, that can be studied to really prove it. And I know they got you know the petitions going around to get uh, get them protected. You can't protect something that is not already proven. It doesn't matter how many people believe in it or think it's real or even the ones that's actually seen them and know, know they're real. If it's not proved to science and our government, they're never going to protect them. So it's kind of, you know, kind of a waste until something is, moves further. And this, uh, this is a question, I guess, about or a comment, I should say, about Melba Ketchum. She's going to have a problem with the study if she used the samples from the Sierra Kills because of not having a comparison sample from Justin. Uh, yeah, you know, I heard about, I heard a little bit about that. I, I, I didn't follow that a whole lot. I thought the, the story was sort of uh, had question marks from the from the beginning. Uh, it may happen, may not. I don't know. They they also claim now that uh, the second juvenile Bigfoot that he shot had had blood on his boots. You know, he got they bled all over his boots, and they're going to try to pull a sample off of that. But that's been a pretty good while. I don't know. And plus, you know, I don't know. He's probably wore the boots again. I would imagine. So that might be that might be hard to. Uh, Actually, get a good. Well, I, I'd, I'd say it would probably be impossible to get a uncontaminated sample from boots that have been worn, been sitting for what months. And see, yet yeah, where it would uh, we want them back to the uh, Bigfoot? What it would be where it would be fit into the uh, family tree? Uh, that's a good question. I've seen some charts and things of where. People suspect that it would fit, but uh, hopefully, hopefully, some some someday they'll determine exactly where where it came about from. Uh, let's see, uh, back to the uh, Sierra Kills. I take it uh, they could. This is in the chat room. They could get a sample from the boots, but a bigger issue is going to be. That there's no proof of what Justin says. Well, hmm, that's that's a good good point, I suppose. I know there's a lot of people that uh, went to the area and investigated it, and uh, and uh, some of them made videos. And I think at one time they took some dogs and everything. I don't know, but uh, I do know from personal experience uh, when dogs are around a Bigfoot. You don't have to worry about them tracking them. They're too scared. And I know this from personal experience. Uh, I, so I don't I don't see where a, a, a dog was going to do them much good, really. Maybe if, to find a dead one, maybe it could trail up to it. But And uh, like you say, we uh, comment in the chat room that all we really have is their story. Because there's not really no video of the event of the uh, Sierra kill, or kills, I should say, with the S. But, uh, and let's see, Loch Ness monster, huh? Uh, the Loch Ness monster was given a scientific name that's published in Nature. Uh, well, I, I the word far too big for me to say, but. Uh, uh, when did that when, when did that happen in, in, in Nature magazine that they uh, actually gave Loch Ness monster a, a scientific name? How long has that been? That would be it's, that's kind of interesting. But 
it's very true that our, our world has got lots of mysteries in it. We just have to, uh, we just need more people looking and researching. Uh, one of the biggest problems that I find in the Bigfoot community is we got people who are researching Bigfoot that really don't believe in Bigfoot. They put out that they believe in Bigfoot, but really you can tell by some of their words and some of the things that they do and their posts and that they really don't believe in Bigfoot. So I don't know. That's a skeptic. Why would a skeptic go, you know, somebody don't believe, why would you spend time and, you know, looking for something that you don't think there? I don't, I don't, I don't, that's beyond me. Well, time is about to run out on me, I suppose. I'm sorry for the having to wing it today. Oh, uh, so we have got a call. Let me see. That might be Dale that's calling in. No, nope. see, let me check it. Hang on just a second. Let's see. Uh... Hello, 317. You are hey, no, here. Thomas, this is Shane. Hey, how you doing, Shane? <laughs> I'm doing pretty good. I heard that you had a guest fall through, and I know that you've only got a few minutes left. But I thought I would call in and try to help you out, or maybe we can schedule another day to tell my story. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, could you give us a, a brief overview, and then be be happy to schedule you. I sure can. Well, one night some friends and I were fishing in southern Indiana, and we were in the, the limestone quarries, uh, and right up the outskirts of a little town called Linton, Indiana. And uh, we encountered what we thought was an angry beaver. Uh, we were floating in about approximately 80 foot of water in a rubber raft. And we thought this beaver was splashing its tail, you know, to warn us off. They, they, they tend to do that when they're angry. Um, it wasn't long we realized, hey, we better get back to the bank or this thing may come in the boat with us. So we went into the bank we were fishing, and uh, the next thing we know, the, the beaver's splashing right out in front of us. Now, mind you, it was pretty dark that night, and there was a lot of steam coming off the water from the heat earlier that day. So we couldn't see too far out, and uh, it wasn't long after that I caught out of the corner of my eye a white flash through the air and then a splash. And then I seen it again, and I realized that it was no beaver, and I told my brother and our friend Mike, uh, you guys need to pay attention because I think I'm seeing something here or I'm sick. So they started to pay attention too, and they seen also what were basketball-sized limestone rocks falling through the air into the water. Oh, no. That's yeah, a... and at, at, at this time we're, we're kind of shocked, you know. Yeah, if that hit you, that would uh, that could have hurt. Yeah, it, it would have hurt for sure. <laughs> I mean, they, yeah. they were actually basketball-sized chunks of limestone. Well, um, how long did it take you to get out of there? <laughs> well, actually, we <laughs> you call it stupid whatever, but we stood around for a while. We were kind of in shock, kind of a – I mean, the last thing on our minds was it being, you know, big fuzzy. We'd, <laughs> we'd never thought that, you know, at that point in time that it might be a Bigfoot maybe until we had shined a spotlight across the water. And what we seen on the other bank, which was about 50 yards across, was a shadow. And the shadow cast off of whatever was about 20 feet tall against the bank. Okay, now, mind you, all the fog's lifting, so the spotlight, it was a million candle, power, cordless, rechargeable spotlight. Um, the fog may have distorted the light, and we couldn't actually get a really good view of what was causing the shadow, but the shadow was swaying back and forth. Okay, and we watched it for about, I don't know, maybe a good two and a half minutes. And whatever it was, decided to tear up the hillside over there. And we heard trees snapping, popping. Now, mind you, this is on Gamble Lake, and Gamble Lake is about a mile long, but it's only about 50 yards wide in its widest area. And this is about 1 o'clock in the morning, so we decided to pack it up and take off out of there. I've, I've never been back there in the night again. Um, I have been back in the daytime to take pictures. This all happened back in 2006 or uh, 1996. 
uh, before my brother's well, death occurred. The uh, the swaying back and forth that is a uh, kind of an aggressive behavior in other primates. You, I've seen it in chimps and things like that. Uh, how they kind of rock uh, left to right a little bit, you know, back and forth. Right. That's that's kind of an aggressive behavior. And and if it's if something's throwing basketball sized rocks, we know it's not a squirrel <laughs> or anything like that. Well, I know what I've seen, and I'm, you know, I, I act crazy, I'm fun crazy, but I'm I'm not mental. I know what we've seen. There were three of us that seen it, and there's still one other guy besides me who will testify, and I've been trying to find this guy everywhere, and I will actually locate him eventually. Um, did you notice, Did you notice any eye shine or no. any color to the eye, eye shine? No, there's, no we, we, could see, we could see movement, but we could not get an outline of what was causing the shadow. I mean, to me, it looked like a bunch, you know, it would be like looking at leaves and they're blurring, you know. That's the only way I can describe it. There was an outline of what was causing the shadow. But the shadow was pretty easy to see. I mean, <laughs> it, it was no cow. <laughs> That's the only other thing around there that large I, could, I, I thought would have made that kind of noise going up the hillside. And How many daytime, rocks did, was it through at you? Well, from the time we were out floating, I'd probably say maybe – at least ten splashes from what we thought was a beaver tail on the water before we went back to the bank. Oh, and probably we stood there and watched maybe another ten while we were fishing. And I didn't say anything to the other two until uh, I'd seen it with my actual eyes, the white flash, and then seen a rock with my own eyes falling from the air. Whatever was launching those rocks, it was very strong. I have no idea where they were coming from. Like I say, that that lake is at least fifty yards wide. Well, you may have had several around you. Yeah, could have, <laughs> could have. So you you probably did the right thing, just going ahead and getting out. You must have got too close. Yeah. What What was really interesting is that at the time I didn't know anything about rock throwing, and I'd read a story a couple years later about a man on a mountain stream somewhere who was fishing, and something was throwing pebbles at him. And I thought, well, you know, maybe that's a, a characteristic. Maybe it's something they do when they want you to leave, and they don't want you there any longer. So, and and since then, I've read plenty of stories about rock throwing. Yeah, yeah. You know. And that's uh, well. I appreciate you calling in. That's that's a good story. I I like that. Well, I wish I could have caught you earlier, but it's it's nice yeah. to talk to you, and it's. I could have used the help. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which I've kind of been running around a lot the last couple of days. I, I didn't maybe have as much time. I had a, a funeral to attend last night, and uh, I don't know. It just seemed like I've had a lot to do, and and yeah. then some technical difficulties for Dale, and we couldn't couldn't get it in. We had some great things planned today, but uh, hopefully we'll get to it uh, in the coming weeks. Well, well I know you're real busy. You calling in. Hey, anytime, Thomas. Thank you. And. Uh, Maybe maybe we can get you on the show and, and spend a little more time and, and let you take some uh, questions and, and things like that. Okay, sure. Hit but I me appreciate up. you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I appreciate you. Uh, appreciate you calling in. So okay. I'm down to like the last sixty seconds, so I guess I better uh, sign off and. Okay, Tom. We'll, we'll look, talk to you later. I appreciate you. Goodbye. So, I appreciate everybody showing up. Uh, Sorry that we had to cancel with Dale and, and what we had planned, but uh, hopefully we'll reschedule that and uh, and and get that going. I do have a couple other people lined up that are wanting to tell their uh, their personal experience that uh, they've seen. So uh, I'm, I'll try to get that lined out over the next uh, come you know a few coming weeks. And uh, I just pretty appreciate everybody showing up. So you guys have a great weekend and uh, enjoy yourself and be careful out there.